Where did we get that Marshall music? Ah, Good so morning, dramatic. everybody. I'm Mark Haynes, and this is Morning Call. And I am Liz Clayman. Indeed, boy, I'll tell you something. This is quite a day. Now, we've seen the markets come down just a bit. We got that employment cost index number, Mark, yep. that looks like a little bit of inflation when it comes to employees and companies having to pay employees for just uh, at least the third quarter, highest in two years. But all of that certainly pales when you look at the overall picture of what is happening with the crucial midterm elections. All day here on CNBC, we are going to be looking at what it all means for the markets, for the economy, for your business. Yeah, we got it all covered already. From Main Street to Wall Street to Washington, starting here on Morning Call for the next two hours. We'll dig deep in our next Tuesday's results. Potential power shifts on the hill could affect Wall Street and your investments and your neighbor's mood, you whatever. Bet. Yeah, speaking of neighbors and Wall Street to Main Street, Bill Griffith from Power Lunch will be live from Main Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. Bill Griffith joins us now with a preview of what he's coming up at noon Eastern. Bill. That's right, Liz. I'm out of uniform today in my civilian clothes as we are here on Main Street where the economy really does matter in this election. Voters say it is the number one issue for them. Jobs, wages, immigration. We're at famed Price Hill Chili Restaurant, one of the real landmarks here in Cincinnati. Everybody comes to Price Hill. We will talk about those issues. We have uh, small business owners who are trying to meet a payroll and grow their businesses at the same time. Workers who fear that their jobs are being migrated overseas. We'll talk about the issues that are important to them. And the candidates in some of the hottest races in the country that both Democrats and Republicans are watching very carefully. Senator Mike DeWine, who's fighting for his political life right now, and the two uh, House candidates, uh, the incumbent Steve Shabbat, who's represented the, uh, tw the first district in Ohio here for the last 12 years, and his challenger, the Democrat John Cranley, will be joining us as well. So join us at noon Eastern, right here from the uh, main street in the heartland, Coming up at noon Eastern on Power Lunch. In the meantime, we go to Washington. Erin Burnett has her hands full at 2 o'clock Eastern time. What's coming up, Erin? That's right, Bill. And you've got Main Street. We have Washington covered, one of the most important congressional elections in decades. Who will win? NBC's Tim Russert and our own Washington Bureau Chief John Harwood are going to join me live from Washington to give you some answers on that question. And then your money. Will Democrats raise taxes? Well, we're going to be putting that question to the man in charge of giving Democrats control of the House. Rahm Emanuel from Illinois will be our guest. And then the man facing off against him, the Republican in charge of holding on to the House. That's Tom Reynolds of New York. Also, we've got Majority Leader Bill Frist going to join us, talk about the alternative minimum tax and whether he'll run for president. Also going to be talking to Democratic scion Ted Kennedy about his aspirations. And then those who would be president, Barack Obama is going to join us to talk about his plans and just what it actually means to be a Democrat right now. And then Mitt Romney will join us, governor of Massachusetts. He's in charge of getting Republicans elected across the nation and one of the architects of a crucial health care plan in Massachusetts. We're going to talk about his presidential aspirations as well. We've got the White House budget director with us. It is going to be an extremely special show here from Washington. But now, back to Wall Street and to Mark and Liz. Yeah, but what, what else, Aaron? That sounds like a terrific lineup. And we here have on Morning Call an unbelievable lineup as we look at what the elections will mean for Wall Street and you, the investor. Let me tell you about a couple of things that you will see, a couple of important Wall Street names that you will hear about coming up in the next two hours. Guests include one of Wall Street's top strategists, Laszlo Barini. He'll tell us how the elections could affect your portfolio. Does it matter if there's gridlock or not? How should you position your money? We'll ask him. Also ahead, former telecom and cable CEO Leo Hendry, who now manages private investment fund Intermedia Partners. We'll talk to him about the elections and the world of private equity. And Vanguard Group founder John Vogel about what Tuesday's vote could mean for mutual funds, hedge funds, and the economy. We've got all the bases covered for you right here on Morning Call. Mark. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what all the excitement is behind us. Quite a bit. I'm beginning to suspect it's more than I was told the first time, but we're still working on finding out what it is. Just minutes ago, the uh, conference board released its Consumer Confidence Index for October. Now stands at 106.4. Uh, 105. So 105.4. 105. Okay. I don't need glasses. I just need longer arms. Um, <laughs> 105.4 down from an upwardly revised rats. 105.9. 105.9 in September, below forecast of 108 even. The moderate decline due to consumers' mixed assessment 
of current conditions, less favorable view of the job market. Today's economic numbers and a barrage of earnings reports, including P&G, all in the market mix this morning. Let's check out the markets for you. The Dow is, uh, oh, we just slipped below break even. We're down about a point. NASDAQ Composite is up five and change. The S&P is up just a tad. What else do you want to show them? Are we showing them oil? I did the S&P. It's up just a tad. All right, Bob Pisani's here on the floor. Checking out today's action, Roberto. And Mark, the important thing is we're two-thirds of the way done earnings season this morning. We've got terrific numbers overall. They're continuing to hold up with S&P 500. Going to have earnings increases of 17.6 percent. That's a blended rate, both of them together here for the third quarter. That's the highest since the fourth quarter of 2004. So the numbers are continuing to hold up. We're now sprinting to the finish line. This will be the big week to finish things off here. Overall sectors, energy a little bit on the weak side again. It's had a tough October. Great start, poor close here. European banks are notably weak today. UBS, I don't know what happened. They surprised on the downside. Big drop in net profit. Surprising numbers there. Investment banking was weak. Poor results from fixed income. Apparently, they made a broad bet on rising rates during the quarter. But you see, it's not dramatically affecting the other European banks. Deutsche Bank and Lloyds and ABN are down just fractionally. And ING Group is to the upside. HMOs are still moving to the downside here this morning. As a group, they're down 2 2.5%. Humana was a bit of a disappointment yesterday. And as a result, we had all the stocks to the downside. So Cigna was down here again today. Health Net's down. WellPoint is also to the downside. Elsewhere in IPO news, Halliburton's finally advancing the ball on its KBR spinoff. They set up planned IPO pricing this time. They gave the pricing at $15 to $17 a share. They had previously announced they were going to float 27.8 million shares. The bottom line is this. They're going to, looks like they're pulling a little less money than they anticipated from that overall. KBR is one of the largest contractors in the world, particularly big in the defense contracting area here. And Apple finally announcing a new iPod shuffle. Now, we had known about this before, that it was coming, but now they announced a few more details here. Apple started on the upside throughout the day and is up here today, but off of its earlier highs. Mark, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Listen, I've been asking this question. I know you've been asking this question. Do we know yet what Wall Street wants out of this election? <laughs> look, look around you, Mark. You've been down here as well. And most Wall Streeters are Republicans, not all of them. And most Republicans, most of the people down here want a Republican win because they think Republican control of Congress will be better for the stock market and better for the economy. There's concerns about a couple of sectors. I'm going to get to that point in a minute, but there's concerns about a couple of sectors. Wall Street does not like anything that smells of price controls right now. But if the Democrats win control of the House even, it's likely they're going to try to pass a bill that would give the federal government the ability to negotiate Medicare prescription drug prices. That's a very controversial issue. Democrats say the last deal negotiated gave drug companies way too much power. Republicans say negotiating prices would be a start down the road to price controls, and they don't want to see that. One thing's for sure, a bill like this would pose a dilemma for President Bush. A bill that would curb drug prices would make it through the House, probably make it through the Senate. Then there would be an interesting veto test for the president. Uh, he'll veto a lot in the next two years, but if this drug bill has a head of steam, there's even a chance he might sign it. You know, despite these concerns about price controls, drug stocks have been on a tear recently. Take a look at the drug index, the DRG. This is the last six months. It's up 7% since the July bottom here. Right, what about big oil? The street thinks a Democratic victory would be a marginal negative for oil, by and large. Now, remember, Wall Street saw big oil lead the stock market rally beginning in 2003. They are grateful for that. Wall Street does not want to see a Democratic Congress pushing a windfall profits tax to subsidize research into alternative energy sources. They don't want to see investigations of price gouging from the oil companies, and they don't want to see talk about rolling back some of the favorable tax treatments that big oil has enjoyed in the past. Next may affect the markets here, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Now, some on Wall Street have been calling for more curbs on these mortgage purchasers. This has been an issue down here for a number of years, but a bill that would limit lending ability of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will likely die in any Democratic House. They like Fannie and Freddie Mac, the Democrats do, so Fannie and Freddie Mac, look here, been up rather nicely in in the last couple of months here. Finally, do stocks really do better when the Democrats are in charge or when the Republicans are in charge or when there's gridlock? The bottom line is I've looked at a dozen of these reports and the answer seems to be absolutely 
No, I know you're surprised at that. A lot of people say that gridlock overall is good here, but that's a big, big issue. The bottom line is that Wall Street professionals do not let elections drive their overall investment decisions, and for very good reason. There's not enough evidence that there is a st statistically significant relationship between the party in control and the market performance. There are just too many other factors that affect the market. Obviously, Federal Reserve policy, earnings momentum, uh, those kind of things. And that's what matters. Earnings have been strong. The soft landing is still intact. And Liz, that's the primary reason the stock, the stock market's been moving up in the last three months. Back to you. Bob Pisani, thank you so much. And look, let's talk a little bit more about what Wall Street wants from these elections, what it hopes for. We go straight to the horse's mouth. We want to bring in Brian Gardner. He's Washington research analyst with Keith Briet and Woods. He says Wall Street wants stability. James Lucier is senior Washington analyst with Prudential Equity Group. He says Wall Street just wants it all to be over. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with you on that, Jim. Brian, I'll start with you, though. When you say stability, can you talk a little bit about whether you mean they just want status quo for the Republicans to remain in place? No, I, I think they, you know, what Bob was saying before is that... Thank you for giving us the Wall Street perspective. Thanks very much, Liz. Thanks very You're much. You're welcome. Mark? All right, there's a lot at stake for Wall Street and the markets when it comes to your money and your vote. Strategist Laszlo Marini and Clark Winter on what next week's midterm election could mean for your portfolio. But first, Bob O'Brien at Earnings Central. Take it away, Bob. Yeah, Liz, you know, your renewal of your Martha Stewart, uh, your Martha Stewart subscription showing up in the bottom line performance of the publishing company. We'll tell you how those numbers break down when Morning Call comes back after this. You're watching Morning Call on CNBC, first in business worldwide. Monday, get a double dose of Cudlow and Company. With the election just hours away, Larry and his political insiders predict what's next for the economy, the markets, the war. A Cudlow and Company election countdown. Live from Washington, D.C., your money, your vote. Monday, 5 at 8 p.m. Eastern on CNBC. Welcome back to Morning Call, live from the New York Stock Exchange. From flaky pastry to rickrack on the tablecloths, Martha Stewart had some interesting news today. Bob O'Brien's at Earnings Central. Bob. Yeah, Liz, and it's a day that's got to make Martha herself smile. You're watching CNBC, first in business worldwide. The Bond Report is sponsored by PIMCO, the authority on bonds. Yeah, Everybody get the. Hi, <laughs> hey, the Fuller Man is out here. Everything looks right, good. Welcome back. Get the vacuum out. The New York Stock Exchange. So, like, this is what real friends do to each other, folks. <laughs> we take care of. We groom each other. We're just a bunch of nitpicking baboons. <laughs> like the like He's on National Geographic. Look. So what's happening yeah. here? Let's uh, tell us about the markets. Well, the market is crummy because the economic news is crummy. I mean, look at the employment cost index was a lot higher than anticipated. The Chicago PMI was a lot higher than anticipated. The consumer confidence numbers that were weaker than expected. Uh, stocks down, bonds market moves up. The dollar weakened dramatically just a, a little after 10 o'clock Eastern time. I don't know. The bond market is starting to trade here like maybe another rate cut is a possibility. The numbers were not good today. The economic news was not particularly whoa, whoa, good. What, rate cut? Wait a minute. Well, Employment cost index like, look, is up. At, look what happened to the bond market at the, like 10.05 here. Hawks we started up. moving up dramatically. The, the dollar. The 10 year is down five basis points. The twice. dollar. I know, but it rallied rather noticeably. The, dro the dollar weakened rather dramatically at 10 o'clock Eastern time. The, the economic news was not very good today, you have to admit. Can Come I on. just say, though, it looked like there was inflation at the employment cost index That's level. The point. I even confirmed with Leesman on that. That's the point. That is the entire the, the, point. The ECI number was a lot stronger than anticipated. Then you see a rate That's hike a concern. That's a down? concern here at this point. So the, the point is 
overall, the news came out that the market was not particularly happy with. So that's that's the bottom line here. My general impression, Bob, and feel free to disagree. My general impression is this market is at best tepid on the earnings reports and is really anxious to get more data on the economy. I just don't think the earnings this time around have carried as much weight and moved the market as much as I have seen in previous quarters. Well, the, but I'm not sure I agree with that. 17%, 17.6% is what we're up so far in the thir third quarter for the estimates. That's the best increase in the S&P 500 for earnings since the fourth quarter of 2004. And look what the, we've had this great rally up 12% on the S&P since July. I think the numbers overall have been pretty good, and that's why the market's been moving up here. But remember, the whole thing is predicated on the soft landing scenario and inflation being relatively low, and the numbers today didn't help the soft landing and the low inflation. Scenario. Bob Pizzani. All right, you know what? A remarkable coincidence. As soon as you started to disagree with me, we ran out of time. Thanks. <laughs> Bob Pizzani. It works every time for him. Every time. 16 well, years he's been doing this. Let's thing. see if Rick Santelli, who I know has been listening from the Chicago Board of Trade and the Mercantile Exchange, see what he has to say about those moves in the 10 year yield that Bob and Mark and I were just. Oh, we got oil behaving, we got rates behaving. We should do okay. We should do okay. Uh, that's it for my hour. Liz will carry on with Michelle Caruso Cabrera. Thank you very much for watching. See you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Squawk on the street with Erin Burnett. Thank you so much, Mark. Good to be here with you at the NYSE. But again, we do continue. But for those of you watching in Europe, the closing bell is next. But now it's the second hour of Morning Call. Don't go away. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Morning Call. I'm Michelle Caruso Cabrera. And I'm Liz Clayman. Thank you so much for joining us. Our special coverage continues live here from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. A look at what's at stake for Wall Street, what's at stake for investors. We are going to cover the gamut right here at the New York Stock Exchange. But first, let's get the business news headlines from CNBC's Biana Goladriga. Biana. Good morning, Liz. So great to see you all there at the big board. IBM, meantime, shares are up 1% in today's session. That's just in the past 30 minutes. Minutes. Now, the company announced it's adding $4 billion to its stock repurchase program. It's now the leading gainer in the Dow Jones Industrial Average so far today. New York Stock Exchange Chief Executive John Thane says his exchange and the Tokyo Stock Exchange are indeed talking, but that an outright merger appears unlikely for the two. Facebook is trying harder to connect with users of other websites. It's introduced new features that allow its own users to collect published content from affiliated sites and paste those items onto their own Facebook pages. Facebook is the number two social networking site in the U.S. And finally, after three decades of appearing on desktops, look for PCs to start showing up in your own car. Connecting through regular cell phone signals, they will let people check their email, avoid traffic jams, and even make restaurant reservations. The Ford F-Series pickup is one of the first cars with this technology. The Ford Link went on sale last month as a $3,000 option. Michelle, back to you. I'll take it, Bianca. So why on earth are we here down at the New York Stock Exchange? Because a week from today, we all go to the polls, and we're here to tell you what is at stake for Wall Street, corporate America, and the economy. And what if there is a shift on Capitol Hill? What would that really mean? How would it impact the big money worlds of things like hedge funds and mutual funds? We will be joined by financial heavyweights Leo Hendry and John Vogel, the founder of Vanguard. Chris Matthews, Tucker Carlson, <laughs> Jonathan Alter, they're all going to join us because the one big question that a lot of folks have been asking, can the Republicans move the shift away from a focus on Iraq back to the economy? Those guys all have very pointed views. You can't miss that. They'll all be together fighting away. But first, let's tell you how the markets are doing right now. And it's been an interesting day because we did get a bunch of economic data. And it appears that that data is really what's affecting the markets, at least in the short term. Starting off with the Dow Jones Industrials. Boy, has this been a, a real up and down day. We've got the Dow moving. Let me see, up about 14 points. Uh, S&P 500. Chip, can you tell me? Let's see, I can't, I can't see it from where I am, but I can see that the NASDAQ is just up slightly for the moment. Crude oil? 
crude oil is down about 54 cents at the moment. So that interesting move in oil that we saw yesterday seems to be carrying through today. But let me bring in Bob Pisani. He's with us now. And here I am. I'm in the middle because here's all of my fantasies are fulfilled now. I can die and go to heaven. Liz and Michelle are on the floor with me, and the rest of you can go home. We don't care. You know, I'm so happy to have you both down here. We should come down more. It's so delightful to see you here. You know what the problem here, folks, is crummy economic news. Look what's going on here, Liz and Michelle. Chicago PMI, weaker than expected. Consumer confidence, weaker than expected. That employment cost index, a measure of inflation, comes in higher than expected. All right, so what's it all mean? You got weaker economic news, you got higher inflation news, and look what you get. You get a flat market in terms of stocks, but you get a bond rally, and you get a dollar dramatically weakening a little after 10 o'clock. It's not joyous news for the stock market this morning, and yet look what's going on down here. Still, the stock market does not fall apart. It drops a little bit as that news comes out after 10 o'clock, and then it starts rallying back, and this has been the characteristic of the market for two months now, trying to make a nice little comeback. You heard a little bit uh, about IBM. Keep watching those tech stocks because NASDAQ hit a 52-week high just last week. And, folks, look at all these tech stocks. IBM's at another 52-week high here today. And a whole bunch of other stocks, chip stocks like NVIDIA, are rallying overall. Google is sitting right near another high. We're just having a nice week overall here. Apple on that announcement of that shuffle has been moving up rather nicely. is up another dollar. So it's the tech stocks that have really been moving up. And the economic statistics while poor, are still not torpedoing the stock market. That is surprising and, to a lot of people's minds, inexplicable well, strength well, you in get, the stock you market. you get a stock like Apple that comes out with news constantly, and they've got a new, what, shuffle today? And so that, of course, pushes it up more than a dollar. When you come out with news that's good, you've got stocks that are moving. The important thing about technology stocks is that the earnings estimates are actually going up throughout the quarter. You know, normally they cut and earnings estimates as we go through. That's well. right. And we've had a nice move up in the technology, and it's been a terrific surprise overall. Financial stocks are also going to have a very good quarter. Their earnings estimates up about 30% compared to last year. So the bottom line here is it's the earnings that drive the stock market, folks, and the soft landing a little less problem a little more problematic here today but still the soft landing is not not done in yet you know it's interesting bob i was listening to you earlier talking about what does wall street want out of the uh, out of washington and conventional wisdom does suggest that wall street would like the republicans to take control but that's not always the case joining us now is leo hendry he's well known for many of the deals that he's done in the past he's a private equity guy right now and He's also a Democrat. He joins us from Washington. Good to see you, Mr. Hendry. Thanks for joining us. Tell us, why is that when so many people think that if you're a big gun on Wall Street, if you're a, a big gun for joining us, we really appreciate it. It's always my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Leo Hendry giving us the less conventional view from Wall Street. And I think that that's an important voice to be heard, no doubt. As always, we like to give many voices a shot, and one of them is a very big heavyweight on Wall Street. John Jack Vogel, he of course founded Vanguard, one of the world's largest mutual fund companies. He's always had strong opinions on mutual funds, now he's got them on hedge funds. He will let us know what he thinks should come out of the upcoming midterm elections as they pertain to hedge funds. And there's so much focus on the economy for this election, but also on the Iraq war and what is happening there. Republicans trying to shift the focus away from the Iraq war. Can they do that? That's the question that we're going to be talking to with an all-star panel up next. You're watching Morning Call on CNBC. First in business worldwide. I think the economy is not as good as perceived to be by the Republicans. See. Welcome back to the special edition of Morning Call Live from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. The Dow Jones Industrial Average higher by almost a point. I'm standing at the host for IBM. Chris Magaro spear, spear leads Kellogg's is the specialist here. And he's a little shy, doesn't want to turn around. Come on, turn, please your mother and, and look at the camera. What am I looking at? IBM at a 52-week high here, up 74 cents, 92.24, if I got that right? Correct. Intraday high is? 92.68. All right. You a little busy? Are we in? <laughs> we have a little bit of a 
All righty. Uh, there you go. That's one of the reasons why we see the Dow Jones Industrial Average in positive territory, not by a whole lot. IBM, obviously, a Dow component at a 52-week high after announcing a share buyback today and also the board approving its regular quarterly dividend. Liz. And, Michelle, I just uh, was talking to Art Cashin. Our friend here at the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, he said, eh, the market's a little tired when I said, what's going on? So, look, if it comes down to a simple market's a little tired, so be it. Right now, as you said, you know, we've got the Dow up about two and three quarter points. We're watching very closely all of that. Boy, has the investment landscape changed since John Vogel founded the Vanguard Funds, 1975. Since then, options have accelerated. They've exploded for investors as regulators struggle to keep up. And it has been a tough challenge. Heading into the midterm elections, the big question, what issues are most crucial for investors and the economy? All righty, Monica, we'll take it. Technology down here yes. is impressive, Michelle isn't it? and I were just looking. Okay, so you have to look at the ticker, Oscar, to show. You know, the tickers are everywhere. Yeah, they're over here. But what if you need to, follow me over here, what if you need to run over and you're running down this hall, they got the ticker on the ceiling. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving the ceiling ticker. Technology's interesting. It's a double-edged sword, right? Oh, Great yes. stuff here, but it's led to the elimination of a lot of jobs down here at the New York Stock Exchange as well. Well, so. back to the issue at hand. Republicans are hoping to spook the voters when it comes to tax hikes. But if the Democrats take control of at least one part of Congress, does it really mean a bigger tax bill? One of our next guests says, oh, yeah, get ready. You're going to see a huge tax bite. Another guy says, don't worry, no big changes. That debate coming up after the break. Stay tuned. You're watching Morning Call on CNBC. First in business worldwide. Millions of Americans will count on them to make their vote count. But what don't you know about the company that makes the machines? Power Lunch, today, noon Eastern on CNBC. Appreciate it. That's why we have them back so often. I was just noticing we're at the Freddie Mac post here, and a major overhang for the Freddie Mac stocks and Fannie Mae stocks of the world has definitely been heightened political risk, which is sort of what we seem to have right now. They would certainly like to see the Democrats at least take control of part of Congress. But things haven't been good under the Republicans for Freddie Mac. Right, Freddie Mac. exactly. In the meantime, just a week left for the GOP to really try and make a successful run of shifting the focus for voters to the economy. And President Bush has been talking about his tax cuts along with many of the Republicans. But one of our next guests says the economy is not doing as well as the Repub Republicans would like you to think. He says prepare for recession next year. He'll tell us why up next. You're watching Morning Call on CNBC. First in business worldwide. You. Okay. All righty. We were just taking a picture. <laughs> we were like tourists. <laughs> this is our blog cam. We're being so lame and touristy. Thank you so much for joining us in this special edition of Morning Call, live from the New York Stock Exchange. I'm Liz Clayman. And I'm Michelle Caruso Cabrera. Our special edition, Decision 2006, continues now live from Washington, Wall Street, and now to Main Street, where Bill Griffith is standing by in Cincinnati, Ohio. Go Bill. Bill.